step in our greens construction you know we've gone in and we've seen the rough shaping occur in the greens and once the rough shaping has been finished and we come back and we're ready to put the drainage in just before the drainage goes in really the second step is putting up our barrier uh, which you can get a good look at here what it is is really the whole circumference of the green we put this uh, polymembrane kind of barrier in and really it's its main main purpose is water intrusion from the outside um, really enables us to kind of have the entire putty green as a controlled environment if you take a look over here can you can kind of see some of the undulation and slope and really the last thing we want is water to slide off of that hill and really enter into our greens mix. Um, we also have a tracer wire that's kind of run along the perimeter. So really for the rest of time, you know, we can, we will know exactly the, the true shape of the green. Kind of as years past mowing patterns, they have a tendency to move in and the green will, you know, it'll ultimately shrink. And really having that tracer wire there enables us we come back in and identify the true shape and readjust our mowing patterns to make sure that we never lose the shape and integrity of the green. And really that's what we're looking at here is, is this barrier here mainly for water intrusion. We want to make sure that that 12 inches of sand is protected and we don't have any outside water entering our putting green profile. Um, what we're going to move on to here, if we swing around, Ken, is we're going to talk a little bit really about drainage and how it works. Let's keep in mind, when we build a USGA putty green, really it's comprised of 4 inches of gravel and 12 inches of sand. And once they complete the rough shading, or excuse me, the rough shaping, we need to come down and we ultimately begin to reshoot the green. Um, and if you take a look here, you can, you can see a lot of these elevation changes in the green. And with this 0 0.7 to 0.8, obviously we're kind of, we're losing some elevation there. And why that's critical is we want to ensure that in the four inches of pea gravel and in the 12 inches of sand that we're consistent through the entire putting green. And that's what these numbers are really dictating. Not, are they, not only are they dictating the exact elevation change, but it's essentially a blueprint for the subfloor of the putting green. Uh, it enables us to make sure that we really get that four inches of pea gravel consistent throughout. We're actually gonna slide up here and, and take a closer look at the pea gravel and the way the drainage works. So following up on our barrier here, which we have a we have a nice look at it here. We've talked about really the staking and the layout of the subfloor. It's kind of difficult to see all of the pink numbers that are, are painted on the subfloor currently, but they're essentially staked on 10 foot centers. And really what that is, is that's the elevation changes of our proposed, this is the new fifth green. And what those elevations, elevations enable is to make sure that we're consistent with our profiles like we talked about with the pea gravel and the sand. Um, what we're looking at here is an excellent opportunity to really look at what lies beneath the, what lies beneath our, our, our new bent grass putting surface. And this here is just one of the many herring bones uh, of the subfloor of the putting green. 
Um, you can see these gentlemen are coming in. He has a mini excavator and he's digging, like I said, one of the many herringbone patterns of a USGA spell green. Once they get this drain tile cleaned out, you can see the perforated pipe in the, in the background. That perforated pipe will then be laid in um, and it'll be covered with pea gravel. Uh, obviously, what the pea gravel does is when we drain that 12 inches of sand, this herringbone pattern that will be laid out in the entire green is the, that's the drainage network to relieve the water out of the putty surface. Um, and you can see if you come in a little bit closer, Ian, really that four inches of pea gravel and the, the job that these gentlemen are doing in order to maintain that four inches all the way throughout the putty green. They actually use these little pieces of perforated pipe that they cut and have a flag on it. And as they lay in the pea gravel, they have that perforated pipe in the, in the floor to ensure that they will be able to have a consistent four inches throughout the entire putty green. And like I said, the, the herringbone, you can kind of think it's really one main drain that he's kind of on right now. And off of that main drain is what they, we would call them the herringbones, that they have it up. So we essentially have a network of drain tile underneath the putting surface um, to relieve that water. And what that enables through getting the water out of the profile, it enables us to firm the putting uh, putting greens up and, and ultimately provide a great roll for your ball. Good morning. We're out here this morning taking, the, taking a look at our next step in greens construction. Once we get that four inches of pea gravel in, uh, the next step is to, to bring on site our 12 inches of growing medium. Um, and really you're going to see in a video, uh, in the video you'll be watching, it shows a D10, a big bulldozer, kind of pushing the sand across the green. And they like to do that so it doesn't affect the 4 inch of perf pipe. And in that video, you're going to kind of see them slowly work that 12 inches completely across the entire putting surface. Once we get that cavity filled, we talked about our retaining wall. You can get a good look at it. We get that 12 inches of sand in, and at that point, we add a lot of water in order to pack it. That's really what you're seeing in the backdrop right now is Jerry's on there really kind of compacting our greens mix and really getting it ready for uh, sod in the surface. And this will kind of be a continuous process throughout the day to ensure that we get the green compacted and there's no movement in that sand profile. What we're going to take a look at here in a second is kind of this process being finished and what it's gonna look like in time for Saudi. So once we've gone ahead and been able to import our 12 inches of sand and uh, really water that and compact it and get some heavy equipment to ensure there's no movement, we really end up with our final float of the green. What you can see now where there's really not one imperfection in the surface at all. And we're really ready for the final step, um, which is sodding the green. And it's a really neat process to kind of see them roll down the sod uh, for our new greens here at Palo Alto. What we're looking at here is the finished product of our sod installment. Um, this is hole number two. This screen was sodded. Um, last Tuesday, it's about, you know, eight, nine days old now. And what we can expect or really our process to, to get it in playing condition is to keep light rolling it. And really what we're trying to do is, is that light top dress it um, 
to provide a good medium for kind of those stolons to grow into and ultimately these these sod lines will disappear and really for the winter months we'll be mowing it at a higher height and light top dressing it and then come springtime um, we'll begin to lower the mowing heights and, and be a little more aggressive and and get that ball roll if you if you're not aware um, our putting surfaces were sodded with um, a variety of bent grass called pure distinction and really through years of, of breeding they're constantly getting better at um, improving in characteristics um, I could say with confidence that this is probably the finest type of bent grass um, parting surface on the market today and really what separates it from Poania our, our old greens is its type of growth um, if you watch a lot of golf you'll hear them talk about Poa greens and they're a, a bunch type uh, meaning that their growth is vertical um, as opposed to creeping bent grass um, it's a lateral growth, so it's really kind of creeping. That's the, hence the name creeping. It's crawling along the surface. And really throughout summer, it will enable us to reduce fungicide use, um, lower the mowing heights, along with uh, water consumption. And because they, they, ha they, they have a deeper root system, it allows us to, to apply less water. And really at the end of the day, it, it, it in turn, just provides the best roll and the best putting surface for our membership and we're just very excited uh, for everyone to be able to get out and enjoy this. Um, so this is kind of the finished product. This is what we can expect throughout the front nine. Um, this is the first one completed and it's also the same process that we'll experience next fall. Um, and if we take a walk over here, Keen, I just wanted to take a look at Kind of the finished bunker product. Um, this bunker is not raked, but it does provide a, a good example of our main turf types, really on the whole variety or on the whole property. Um, we just talked about all of our putting surfaces are pure distinction uh, creeping bent grass, and you'll notice on a lot of our bunker surrounds, every bunker out here with the exception of the no-mo, um, it has tall fescue. Um, we, we loop the bunkers with tall fescue, and really the main, main purpose b behind looping the bunkers with tall fescue is uh, tall fescue's characteristic of a higher heat tolerance than perennial ryegrass. So in the middle of summer when that sun's really baking on those edges, uh, it's going to withstand the heat a lot better than our perennial ryegrass. And, and what we're looking on the on the hillside is our five-way fescue blend. Um, we call it the no-mo, and it's definitely something that um, you'll see throughout the project as we move forward. It's really it gives a more of an aesthetic feel in the out of play areas, and that's really the goal with the no-mo is to provide a little more uh, flash. Um, a little more aesthetic feel and to kind of highlight some of those features. And really because it's gonna grow to be a little bit taller, it's really strategically placed in our out of play areas. Um, you're gonna notice it on a lot of the back sides of our bunker complexes. Um, so really like we said, we have creeping bent grass on our putting surfaces. We have tall fescue around the majority of the bunkers, um, with the exception of where the no mow comes into play, and, and no mow is our really our out of play areas, along with providing that that great feel and uh, a really architectural impact. And really, our last last turf type on the entire property, and and probably the one that takes up roughly 85, 90 percent is perennial ryegrass and. That's what we're looking in this collar right here is, is our perennial ryegrass. All of our tees, fairways, approaches are 100% perennial ryegrass. Um, and lastly, our, our bunker sand. Right now, this one's not raked. This variety is, is Pebble Beach White. And I just couldn't be more thrilled with the bunker complexes as well as, as the shape that they're taking. 
We've talked about the, the bunker floor and the sub drainage in the bunkers, um, along with really every bunker out here now has subsurface drainage um, completely around it. And really what that translates to is um, the most consistent playing conditions that we have for our membership. And yeah, just excited to, to get through the winter and, and get this thing going and, and get everyone out and, and get them on uh, the finished product.